Hi, my name is Jean-Claude Lambert here at the Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion, Michigan. We thank you so much for watching our video today. We invite you to join our website at gbwtalbion.org. You have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you. We are here today in our Bible study. Um, we just went over the fruits of the Spirit and the importance of how we break down each fruit that was listed. I believe it's in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 21 and 22, I believe, if I'm <clears throat> not mistaken, but t tonight we will focus on love. I mean, you guys know love is very important. Amen. The Bible says love covers a multitude of what? Sins. Sins. And it's God's love that while we're still breathing today, Amen. while we're saved, while we, uh, we have... The, the, the option of eternal salvation. That's because of God. You cannot say you're um, God's child if you do not have love. So we have a few scriptures that we want to focus on tonight and then we will be on our way. Starting in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 We are interested in verses 4 and 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. The Bible reads, Charity, which is love, suffereth what? Long. And is kind. Charity in the end not. Charity in the not itself. Is not puffed up. Do not behave yourself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, think of no evil. Love is not selfish. I mean, you guys know that. Amen. You cannot say, I love you, and you're eating a steak dinner, ribeye, medium well, amen, amen. <laughs> with asparagus, with a garlic butter on it, loaded. Uh, baked potato with chives, bacon bits, shredded cheese, butter, sour cream, drinking um, uh, strawberry lemonade. Amen. With the butter rolls, with the cinnamon butter, and you looking at your brother, your sister in the face, across from the table, knowing that they're struggling, and they have a glass of water. And you have not offered them anything, not even the rules is free that they offer. It's nothing that it symbols love in that picture. Then as Christians, and this church is growing rapidly, and I'm not saying this because we're on the YouTube channel now, I'm saying because it's true. A lot of times, Christians, we try to choose who we want to be saved. <laughs> Y'all not here. We try to determine who we want to come to church. Aren't you glad God didn't do that to you? Amen. Because many of us, if God was that way, many of us wouldn't be saved. Because none of us deserve it. We have to have the same love that God had for us. And we have to display it. Everybody that comes to this church is not going to be suited and booted. It's not going to have the dress come down to their ankles. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in and they're going to be a symbol of the world. That doesn't mean you turn them away. That doesn't mean you treat them any differently. And then saints are coming all different shape and sizes. The Bible says uh, that in the last days, he poured his spirit upon what? All flesh. That is just not the Simpson family. That is just not the Williams family. That is just not the Armstrong family. That is just not the Birchfield family. Mm -hmm. This is who God chooses. Mm -hmm. And we have to do our best to maintain the church. This is why you see myself and different ministers stress the importance of tithes and offering. You don't never want to put 
the bad burden on the pastor where you kill him. That he's working so hard to create income that he has to hold the church literally on his back. And then when we do get the saints, don't run them out to church before the pastor can teach them the principles on tithes and offering. You see, a good church is one that the, all the members are doing well financially. Just not the pastor has a Rolls Royce Phantom Dry Pit of Ghosts in his parking spot. And the rest of the church members is either walking, riding bicycles, or, or driving pintos. That church is not a thriving ministry. But when the pastor can simply teach the members the principles on tithes and offering. I mean, y'all used to see them gangster movies uh, back in the day. And you see the mafia, the mob, they come down, they drop $25,000 cash on the offering table. They felt that that would take up for the sins they did. But you would say, well, these people are always killing, always stealing, always, you know, just sin. But they always got money. They always got nice cars, always got nice clothes, always got big mansions, always got diamonds and jewelry. That's because the principle doesn't change. All right. So we have to have the same mindset when it comes to love. We must display it as a church. Amen. So while you're rolling your eyes and sticking your mouth at me, let us roll over to 1 Corinthians uh -huh. chapter 16, verse number 14. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14 reads, let all your things be done what? With charity. Charity is love. So if you serve on an usher board, you need to serve with love. Don't want visitors, especially visitors, sometimes you only get one chance with visitors. Mm -hmm. When they come in and you stand at the door, don't say, well, you go sit out. You go sit wherever you want. My feet hurt. Praise the Lord. Or if you are uh, helping out and you give your friend that big juicy breast piece of chicken, and then you give the guests come in, you give them that 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 piece of chicken look like somebody ate half of it all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is that of God? No. No. You're not serving with love. You're showing favoritism. Amen. That's not your job. God will show his favor how he feels. Amen. 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 We have to show love. Amen. And I know some saints, they had eating issues because they was not brought up properly in the training. Amen. But that does not mean that you deter them from the food that the church offers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Maybe Amen. you pray for them that they can eat um, like they have common sense. Everybody was not brought up with training and matters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. I was, and, and my mother, the great late evangelist Sandra Williams, this is done with love. She would smack me in the face and my elbows was on the table. She would smack you in your face, speaking in tongues, if you were smacking your food or chewing with your mouth open. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is called tough love. And this is the product that she raised that you see before us. The Bible said, raise them. When they are young, when they get old, they what? They won't depart from it. So this is why I can go in a room full of millionaires, sit down, eat $150 steaks, and they seem to seem like I fit in because my mother brought me up. It's not about always what you have. Sometimes it's what you're taught. Amen. Amen. Let us scroll over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17. The Bible reads that he would grant you according to the riches of whose glory? His. His glory, which is God, and what's God's name? Jesus. To be strengthened with might 
by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. Faith, Faith that ye be ye being rooted and grounded in what? Love. That's how God operates. We simply can't operate as a Christian if we have hate in our heart. Hate and love is two different things. They cannot operate in the same space. And as Christians, we need to display more love. We will never get our true blessing. We will never get our true elevation. We will never get what is truly that God is meant for us to have if we don't display love. It is not an overnight process. Amen. Displaying love to those that are hard to love is one of the toughest things to do. Amen. But as Christians, we must separate ourselves from the world. We have to do it. Mm -hmm. None of us came into the church and we just knew everything that we were supposed to do as Christians. We had to learn. It's a learning process. That's why the elders, the missionaries, the mothers, the evangelists, the teachers, the ministers, that's part of their job, is making sure that we can help one another for the betterment of the body. You are trying to make the body better. You're not trying to quench the spirit. You're trying to help it. God will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, that you may be strengthened with might by his spirit. What's the spirit? The Holy Ghost. This is for what? The inner man. The Holy Ghost dwells on the inside. So how can you have a heavenly tongue come off one tongue and you try to use profanity on the same tongue? You cannot do that. God does not operate that way. You in the church, you speaking in tongues, running around the church, rolling on the floor, snot coming out of your nose, <laughs> tears coming down your face. Praise the Lord. Amen. Playing the tambourine, singing in the choir on the usher board, trustee, transportation, kitchen committee. Praise the Lord. As soon as, as soon as you get your food from McDonald's, from drive through and then not fool your, fill up your fries container to the appropriate amount, you cuss everybody out in that McDonald's, you begin to spew curses on them, cursing them, telling them what you're going to do to their mother, telling them about their father, and then you want people to come to your church. And then your pastor called meeting after meeting and asked you to invite people to church. People not gonna come. Why? Because you cussing everybody out. Why? Because you let the liquor store buy more Hennessy than those of the world. This is not the same love that God wants us to have. Praise the Lord. Amen. When he speaks about love, he's not talking about love, alcohol. Praise the Lord. And you wonder why you have a kidney problems. Are y'all quiet on tonight? <laughs> the ways of sin is what? Yeah. So if you just keep drinking, Hennessy, I want to do dark alcohol today. You know how y'all do. So I want to do dark alcohol today. So I would do Hennessy. I will do VSOP. Today is my dark day. And tomorrow I would do white. I would want to do white alcohol. So I would do vodka. Tequila, mm -hmm. amen, somebody, mm -hmm. Shirak, mm -hmm. and I will continue to do this till my kidneys fall out of my body through my backside. And wonder why you're not getting no holiness up in yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you are drinking from the same cup the devil is. Amen. And that hurts you display love. If you're intoxicated, another substance, how can you display Christian attributes? And the number one attribute or characteristics we should display as Christians is what? It starts with a M. L-O. <laughs> L-O-V. Is what? Love. Love. Hope somebody listening. Amen. Amen. Let us go to Ephesians 
chapter 4, verse 2. Just scroll over a little bit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, with all lowliness and meanness, and with what? Long suffering, forbearing one another in what? Love. Love. <clears throat> now, long suffering is a characteristic, a fruit of the Spirit, that we simply just gloss over, but it has to do with the fact of loving. And I gave this um, example many times, Sister Keisha, if I'm heading, or I am the transportation, um, um, committee, praise the Lord, and I'm rendering my service and my vehicle to God, not to the members, but to God, not to the pastor, but to God, mm -hmm. and this same couple or this same individual, mm -hmm. they act like they have communication problems, and they are not the brightest bunch of the group, but yet I still uh, let it influence me, and I'm a senior leader. I'm probably the second to third leader in the whole entire church. I have to understand that part of this is what, what is going on. It starts with an L and it's not love. It's long what? Suffering. Long suffering. And then we have to be, to be able to identify the devil. See, the devil is only so much he can do. He can um, deal with your wealth your health, and your family and friends. Ain't too much more than that you can touch. Your wealth, whether it's your money, your finances, your well-being, your health, or your family and friends. That, that's what he's going to deal with. Praise the Lord. So we have to be able to identify, is this happening because I'm allowing it to happen? And is it happening because I'm making it known that it's getting on my nerves? Praise the Lord. And then we have to rebuke that spirit. That's that aggravated spirit. Now we too grown to be Christians and try to aggravate somebody. I'm almost 40 years old. I'm 6'5". I'm 270 pounds. I'm, and I'm African American. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I don't want to be aggravated no more. Praise the Lord. And that's how you have to speak to individuals. And saints to do that. Praise the Lord. But you have to let them know that I'm saved, I'm sanctified, Holy Ghost for you. Please do not play with me. I live this for real. And I'm serious about my service to God. I'm not here to serve you. So when I do something for you, it's not for you. I'm doing it for who? God. And people will take advantage of you. But you have to make sure you rebuke that too. Amen. 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 We have to show love. And just Amen. because you're showing love doesn't mean you get to get somebody push you over. Somebody talk about you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I wish somebody would talk about me. Hallelujah. <laughs> the God I serve. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to serve no matter what the situation yeah. may come. Because this world will test you. And saints Amen. will test you. Because dealing here in the scriptures, Paul writing the church of Ephesus, he's not dealing with sinners. Let me give you a, a key jewel. If you don't take away nothing else, as Sister Arbiana began to fall asleep in Bible study, if you don't take away nothing else from Bible study tonight, this is a key jewel. The majority of the Bible, guess who they're talking to? It ain't sinners. Believers. It's believers. Because Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you what? Unless you be born of what? Born of the Spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. This is part of it. This is the manual. Amen. So if I'm not saved, I don't even understand. This is like reading uh, Chinese arithmetic. I can't see, I can't see it. So the Bible's talking to us. Right. So when it's talking about you need to work on your love, it ain't talking to the sinners. Because the R and B, Beyonce, all them, huh? That's all they talk about is love, fornication and sin. That's their form of love. They already have their communication. 
But as Christians, we have a different love. Agape, unconditional love. So you can be the most unattractive male, the most unattractive female, right? The most terrible habits, the most uh, uneducated individual, right? But guess what God said I need to do to you? I need to love you. And when the churches begin to get back to this, we will begin to see the churches grow just like Greater Bible Way Temple of our meetings. Amen. 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 Let us go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. I don't want anybody else to fall asleep in Bible study tonight. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. Reese and above all things. How many? All. All things, these things put what? On charity, which is what? Love. Love. Which is the bond of what? Perfectness. Perfectness. To be perfect in God's eyesight. To be more of a perfect Christian. A perfect servant. I have to put on love. It ain't about my suit. It ain't about my tie. It ain't about my dress that I got on sale at Macy's. Or I got on sale at JCPenney's because they closing down. Or I got it in Burlington Cone Factory because they got a Black Friday coming up. It's not about that. It's about the love. You can have on the best dress, Versace, huh, Jimmy Choo. Huh? But if you ugly, not as far as how you look, your spirit, and you got hate in your heart, you falling short. It's not about your bank account, your 401k, your portfolio, your retirement plan. It's about love. Amen. You have to have love. This is what Jesus displayed in the Gospels. When he was on earth, Jesus, God in flesh, he displayed love over and over and over and over and over again. Even when I believe the people thought, which he knew he did, he came late when Lazarus died. And they said, Jesus what? Jesus wept. So if Jesus cried, huh? And I'm a man and I'm crying, you bet not call me so. Especially if you're a Christian. Because Christian means to be what? Christ-like. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing soft about me. There's no sugar in my tank. Hallelujah. I stopped drinking Kool-Aid. There's no sugar in my tank. <laughs> Amen. So when you see me cry, it is God's spirit on me. Yes. Ain't nothing soft about me. I'm not on the down low or none of that stuff they be doing in the Koji church. Amen? Amen. God cried and he showed what? It starts with an M. Love. You have to show love. If you remember this church, you don't care you bring it in your candy, throwing the wrappers on the floor. Your phone keep going off in service. You walking back and forth to the bathroom 30, 40 times in a two-hour service. You spilling water and pop all on the carpet. Praise the Lord, having conversations. Looking at, uh, looking at love and hip-hop on your cell phone in the middle of the service. And I'm a new say, I'm a new member. Why, why, why am I supposed to be any different than you when you're not displaying love? This is God's house. That's why you see people arguing. But you take that outside. You don't bring that in God's house. Amen. 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 Because y'all shacked up anyway. Y'all living in sin. And wonder why y'all ain't got the blessing you deserve. But y'all quiet on tonight. So I'm gonna, let's go to First Peter. Chapter 4, verse 8. Only a few more scriptures and we're going to close out. Say, Pastor, stepping on toes tonight. Amen. When the Bible says the truth show what? Set you free. free. I'm not here to uh, play games with you. I'm trying to help you get to where? Heaven. To heaven. You don't need my help to get in 
um, in that concert with Beyonce and Jay Z. You can do that on your own. I'm not helping you with that. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. The Bible reads, "And above what all, all things, things, once again having fervent charity, which is what love. among yourself. First, you gotta love yourself. Amen. But when you can help somebody, you gotta right. what? Help yourself. Amen. How are you gonna serve God in your breath stinking, <laughs> crust all in your lips, <laughs> snot running down your nose? For, for the for the men, you're not groomed. Your beard is all scraggly. Ain't got a haircut in months. Stains on your clothes. How can you display to anybody you know God? You showing that you don't like yourself. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pick up a toothbrush and put toothpaste on it. You have to start with yourself. My mom used to, we used to, she used to help ministers, and she also was a secretary at the church. Uh, so we did receive complaints about people praying for people and they breath stank. And then won't come back. I want you to pray for me, your breath stank. Right. What God you serve? You serve eating in tongues and hollering and hot breath all on me. I'm supposed to get in tune to the spirit and your breath smell like chitlins. How can I get the spirit of Jesus Christ upon me? I'm trying to change my life, live right, and all I can think about is how bad your breath stay. Then you didn't put on deodorant. You must eat. How you gonna help somebody? Right, exactly. <laughs> What God are you representing? And, and you may lie, but this, this is serious. Amen. This happens at churches around America. You have to display first you love who? Yourself. Right. Let's see what it continues to say. Verse 8. For charity shall cover the multitude of what? Sins. Talk about that all the time. Charity is love. Love covers the multitude of sins. So it's not saying if you have love, you can just sin, 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 it's good. It's saying that if you have love and when you make mistakes, that it will cover that. God's love covered them all to his sins when he died for whose sins? Our sins. God was without sins. Jesus was without sins. He wasn't even born in normal conception. He was born of a virgin. Praise the Lord. But he died for our sins. The love he had for us he died for us. The Bible says God so much loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son. Let us go to our last scripture on tonight. First John. I John is in the back. It's by um, I John or First John chapter 4 verses 16 through 19. The Bible reads that we have known and believe the love that God had to us. God is what? Love. love. Semicolon. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in who? God. God. And God in what? Yeah. If you have the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, you claim that. Praise the Lord, because some of us, we mimic that. We didn't got so good as Christians. We didn't figure out how to fake speaking in tongues. Well, you can fake that, but you ain't no fake way to get into heaven. Amen. Amen. Ain't no backdoor pass. Ain't no VIP pass. Ain't none of that stuff, huh? Amen. Ticket master. Praise the Lord. Walmart running the sale. Target running the sale. You can't do none of that. You have to have God in you. And to have that, you have to have love. It's no substitute for love. You know, for those with sugar diabetes, low and high, they got the substitute sugar, the sweetener, you substitute this, then they got the butter. I can't believe that it's not butter, because it is butter. They just don't want you to know. So they change the name to marginal. Huh? It look like it, it smell like it, it cook like it. I can't believe it's not butter. 
I can't believe that you're not saved. And that's what God is trying to get across to us. He done gave us his Bible, gave you a pastor, mm -hmm. you teaching after teaching, preaching after preaching, but you still won't display love. You still got hate in your heart, and you upset about something you have no control over. You mad because Trump in office. Trump is in office because that's what God wants right now. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Yes, practice your, um, your right as an American citizen to vote. But don't you be upset all in the corner drinking, um, drinking some rye and eating ice cream, upset because Donald Trump, you have no control over that. What you do have control over is if you display what? Love. Love. Verse number 17, herein is our what? Love, Love may what? Perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Judgment is the when the rapture comes, when it's all over. Because as he is, so are we in this what? Word. This world. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Uh oh. But perfect love casts out what? Fear. fear. Because fear have torment. He that fear him is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first what? Love us. Love us. So we have to display love. You cannot say, I'm, yes, I'm born again, I'm a Christian, but you're not displaying love. God gave his only begotten son, and we won't even give somebody a piece of God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We know we just got a 2018 Ford SUV. Huh? But we won't pick up somebody that's walking five miles to church. But we say we love God. I love you, God. Huh? We come to church, we don't speak to nobody. And we'll cuss you out if you're sitting in our seat. But we got love. We got so much love in our heart. I love you, God. But you acting like a sinner. And then as soon as you leave the church, as soon as you get, as soon as you get in your trunk, you playing R. Kelly, trying to justify, because he did the song with Marvin Sapp, trying to justify why you listening to Bump and Grind, ain't got a husband, huh? Praise the Lord, I'm talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you scroll down your playlist, you go from R. Kelly to Joe's. We need to have love, not the world's love. We need to have God's love, because God's love saves. And this 